Hello, welcome to lesson seven of Mastering Java. Here we're going to finally begin to talk about uh, the topic of strings in Java. Um, we've learned about lots of different data types uh, in Java thus far in our, in our lessons here. We've learned about integers and floating points. We've also learned about the concept of a character, which is a single letter that you can print out to the screen or read in from the keyboard. And recently we've talked about arrays, which are large collections of basically similar types of data like integers or things like that. We've talked about that. Now we're going to talk about strings, which is something you'll learn in almost every program that you will write. Now in Java, a string is an object, and that is why we've kind of delayed talking about it until after we've kind of covered the concept of an object. In other programming languages like C++ or C, strings are not objects really and so you typically cover strings much earlier but here we had to kind of wait a little bit because strings are objects um, basically a string is a sequence of characters so when we have been doing before we've been doing things like system.out.print ln and we've been doing this kind of thing forever so I love pizzas and you know by now that you can save this and run it and we've been using this enough so that you know that you can print things out to the screen but we've always been enclosing the text that we're printing to the screen in between quotations what you have done here without really knowing it up till now is the sequence of characters between the quotation marks is really what you call a string in Java and a string very simply is just a sequence of characters so here the sequence is the capital I the space the lowercase l-o-v-e, the space, and then pizzas, and then the period. So every single character you see, including any white space like a space bar or even an apostrophe, any kind of weird symbol, every single character that you see is part of the string. So this string has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, if I'm doing my math right, 14 um, characters as part of the string. Now the print statement that we use in Java all the time understands that whenever you put the characters in between these quotation uh, marks it, it already knows that that's a string and it knows how to put that out to the screen and we didn't really go through the trouble of telling you that this is a string up until now because it you know it's kind of not that important until you get to, to what we're talking about now. So let me go ahead and kind of erase that. Um, I guess what I want you to understand is when you have characters between quotations like that, that's what's called a string literal, which is uh, literally uh, uh, just kind of a, a constant you, that you define there and you can print it out to the screen. Now, what we want to talk about now is how to create variables, for lack of a better word, that hold these strings. All right. So you want to create a, a, a name and you want to assign some characters to it. And you want to use that throughout your program. So for instance, um, if I want to do that, here's how you pull it off. First of all, we know it's a string that we're creating. So you go capital S string and we have to give it a name. So let's call it str because that's that's pretty common. If you just have a temporary guy, you want to hold a string, you can name it str, but you can name it anything you like. All right. This is telling Java that we would like to create a string object uh, of name str and we'll put an equal sign there and if you remember this is going to look very familiar to you we can say it's equal to a new string object open a parentheses put a quotation I love um, let's say uh, hamburgers right with a period and we have to always put a semicolon so let me go ahead and save that what we have done here is we have created a string and notice that the way that we declare strings in Java is very very similar to declaring an, uh, an object in Java if you remember back to when we talked about objects you have the type of object you're creating the name of it and you put an equal sign and then you're on this side you're telling it hey open up and create a new object of this type and in this case we have kind of a constructor going on in the background there. We're passing Java the sequence of characters that we want to be initialized into this variable. So we're passing, uh, basically passing that constructor, these, these characters there, and that's how the thing is created. So in this case, we have created something named str, and we have put these characters into that. So I can do that again, s string. Um, I can name it anything I want, just like a variable. I can call it JSON. I can say new string. And I can say, and I also love hot dogs, right? And I can put a semicolon there. Okay, now that you have these strings created, you can use them in all types of different situations. For instance, you can go system.out.println, right? 
and I can just literally treat this as almost like a variable name. If this were an integer, I could just put the name in here and it would print the integer to the screen. So I can just put str there. And on the next line, dot system dot l dot print ln. And then over here, I can put the name of the other string object that I have created. I can save that. And basically what you're doing is you're you're, you're essentially taking these characters that are now stored in this string and sticking it in the print statement and you're doing the same thing for that. So let's print that out. I love hamburgers and I also love hot dogs. Now you, for very simple programs like this you might not quite understand yet, well when, when do I need to use a string? When you can think of it even without knowing all of the details, you can think of lots of situations. Maybe you're creating an address book and you may have a first name, a last name, an address, telephone number, where each of those different fields are sequences of characters. Um, so you would have to use a string to store the first name and a string to store the last name and a string to store the address and so on. Um, basically it's, it, it's versatile when you need to store data that's not just a simple number like an integer can handle. All right. Now let me also show you, this is all fine and dandy, but let me go up here. Let me show you something else. Now the way that we have declared these strings and initialized the object, because remember strings are objects in Java, is very similar to how we declare any object. Now this is exactly correct, and you will see this in, in programming if you read code out there, but it's more common to use a shorthand notation for this because this is so commonly done and it's a little bit wordy. Another way that you can declare is you can say string, uh, let me call this one str2 to, to make it different from the string uh, assignment that we have up here. And I can just put an equal. Now instead of saying new string in parentheses and, and then the string, I can just open up the double quotes on the side and I like to go to Disney land like that. And I can put a semicolon after that. Notice everything goes away and basically I've created a string without specifying new string on the right hand side. This is so common creating strings that Java knows that when, you, when you're when you saying string and then the name on the right hand side when you enclose it in quotes it knows what you're trying to do. Create a string object and assign this character sequence to that object. So let's create another one. String I'll just name it my last name just to illustrate that you can name you can do anything you want here and I can say you know uh, 4584 or 45878 is my favorite number right so notice that in a string you can have uh, letters uppercase lowercase you can have punctuation marks and you can also have uh, numbers here now these numbers are not represented in integer form they're just characters to print on the screen so these are not this is not something mathematical that I can multiply by right here when I put a sequence of numbers inside of quotations like this Java is going to treat it just as a se sequence of characters to print to the screen right and then I can go down here and I can put dot out dot print ln right and I can just create a blank line here by doing that and then I can dot out dot print ln and then inside of here I can say str2 system dot out dot print ln and then inside of here I can say Gibson like this so let me go ahead and save this and print this now it looks like we have some kind of error here. We go back and try to scan through and we see immediately we've got a red underline and of course I forgot to put a semicolon there. When we add that everything gets nicely cleaned up. We go ahead and hit run and then we see here we have the first two strings printed. Now we have the second two strings printed to the screen. Now the last thing I want to show you, let me put another blank line there. Dot out dot print ln just kind of it leave it empty take the x out of there leave it empty that'll just print a blank line to the screen um, these strings that we have created in terms of these names here can be combined in a print statement um, much like we can combine anything that we put in these print statements for instance I can say system dot out dot print ln I can combine text I can say uh, valen I can say valentines day and then I can put a plus and then I can put str1 right so you can think of this str1 it's like a variable just like integers or whatever but really it's an object it's more it's more complex than a variable but it's holding the string so in a print statement I can mix what we call string literals when you're spelling it out inside of the print statement I can mix that with what I have uh, created here. Now notice I'm referencing str1. It's got a red underline because I named this one str and I named this one str2. So just to 
uh, fix that. We'll take that away. We'll hit this guy and we can say Valentine's Day I love hamburgers. Now the reason there's a no space there is because there's no space there. So I can hit this guy here. And then in a similar way, system dot out dot print ln. Just like I can print using a print statement two or three integers in a single line if I'd like, I can of course do this str plus str2. I can do three or four strings, whatever. I can just link them with the plus sign like I always do. And Java knows that this is a string and this is a string and it knows how to handle those and print that stuff out to the screen. So when I run this guy, I love hamburgers, I like to go to Disneyland. So the bottom line in this lesson I wanted to illustrate to you is mostly how do you declare and initialize strings. Um, you'll see it two different ways typically. You'll see it this way which emphasizes that strings are really objects. It's perfectly fine to do it this way. Or you might also see it more like this which is also very common because it's a little simpler. Uh, than all of this stuff. But in e either case, the string is still an object. It's just a shorthand way uh, to get it all set up for you. Also, I wanted to illustrate for you, whenever we have these strings created, you can use the print statements that we've been using all the time to, to, uh, to print them to the screen. Also, you can mix them with other string literals or you can uh, print multiple strings to the screen at once. So there's a lot of versatility there and once you get the hang of what a string is and how to declare them then what we're going to do here in the next several sections is teach you how to use strings in your programs for some a little bit more complicated things than what we're doing here. So I'll show you the full power of how we can use strings in the Java language.